go. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is we're looking for common factors. In fact, we're looking for the greatest common factor. So three? Yeah, exactly. And whenever we do factoring, because you're going to go on in this chapter to do a lot more factoring, always look for the greatest common factor first. So they'll call it the GCF. Okay, so you're right. If you look at these two terms, 6x and 3, the only number that we can take out or divide each term by is the number 3. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to divide both of these by the number 3. And on our next line, that 3 starts outside of the brackets. So we know we've taken a 3 out of the question. And then inside the brackets, we're actually going to divide each term. So we have 6x divided by 3. So in that two. one, what are we going to get? 2x. Yep, 2x. And when we do 3 plus 3, what are we going to get? Or sorry, 3 divided um, by 3? Oh, wait, wait, why do you zero? Yeah, it'll be 1. It won't be 0 because whenever you divide two numbers, think of it like 1 divided by 1, 2 divided by 2. When they cancel out when you're doing division, it actually leaves the number 1. Okay? So... This would be the factored form. You would have 3 times 2x plus, plus. Okay, same idea. We're looking for a greatest common factor first. Okay. Sometimes what you'll find is you may find a common factor. And then as you look at it again, you might find another factor. So we always try to find the greatest one. If that happens, I'll show you what we can do to solve it. But when we look at this, first of all, we're going to look at the first terms, these numbers in front of the variables, they're called coefficients. Okay. So when I ask you to find a factor of a coefficient, are there any factors of 8 and 7 of the coefficients? No. No. There's nothing I can take out from there. I can take 1, but 1 won't change anything if I divide it by 1. Now, on the other hand, I have a variable x squared and x. Whenever you have a question and you're finding common factors, so for instance, let's say we have a question just like this, x squared and x. To find a common yeah. factor, we're going to divide by the variable with the lowest exponent. So technically, this is to the exponent 1. Okay? So in other words, what's going to happen yeah. is I'm going to divide by x to the power of 1. So because there is variables on both of the terms, we're going to divide each of them by x to the power of 1. Same idea as we did okay. before. We take x out to the outside and then on the inside we're going to divide so essentially 8 and we can imagine there's an imaginary one here 8 divided by 1 is still going to give us 8 now here's the trick this is why you had to go over your exponent rules before x to the power of 2 divided by x to the power of 1 what will you be left with Yeah, just x to the power of 1. So you remember that rule when you're dividing them? All you really have to do is put the base and subtract the exponents, and we end up with x to the power of 1. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so these will be our side calculations. They're kind of separate right now. Our question's on the left side. So we have 8x, and then we have 7, and again we have an imaginary 1. Negative 7 divided by 1 still gives us our negative 7. And when we have x divided by x, they cancel each other out. And, or, it's known as leaving a 1. But if I put 1 in and I multiply it by 7, I'm just left with the number 7. Because 7 times 1 is still 7, so I don't actually have to write that 1 in. That's why we say that these two variables cancel each other out. Does that idea make sense? Uh, yeah. yeah. So our final answer would be x times 8x minus 7. So same idea, I gotta look for the greatest common factor first. So we're looking for a GCF. Now when I look at it, first I'm gonna look just at the coefficients. So those are the numbers in front of the variables. Is there a coefficient, or sorry, is there a number I can divide both of them by? 5? Yeah, that's right. I can take 5 out of both of these, right? But I'm not done. What about my variables? We just talked about them on the other page. They both have variables, so I can factor out a variable. Do you know what variable I'd factor out? What do you mean? Uh, what my common factor would be. So remember, I'll go back to the other page. Remember on this page, 
we took the variable with the lowest exponent, right? This one was to the power of 1. So if we go back to this page, which, ex which variable exponent will we take out? 4. Yeah, so we take k to the power of 4 out of both of them. Okay? So if you notice, the number I wrote on the bottom, that's our common factor. So that's what I take to the outside of the brackets. I put my 5 k to the power of 4. That goes outside of the brackets. And then inside the brackets, I evaluate my terms, or I solve for them. And what I can do so is I could... Key. Sorry, go ahead. Five. And then on the other one, what would we have? Uh, 3k, just 3k? Just 3k, yeah, that's right. Because the k would end up with the 0 exponent, which would make it just a 1. So our final answer is 5 k to the power of 4 times bracket 5 k to the power of 2 plus 3 n bracket. Okay, so here's one where we have three terms. Okay, We have three separate terms that we have to find the common or the greatest common factor out of all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to individually look at each coefficient to start and then each variable individually. So, first off, we have coefficients of 21, 28, and 7. Can you think of a number that comes out of all three of those? Uh, I'm not good with that. <laughs> okay, let's think about it. What about, what we can do is we can write multiples of numbers. We've got to think of a number that's divisible by all of them. Okay? So, let's look at the lowest one, 7. So, let's look at numbers that are divisible by 7. What are the okay, factors of 7? What is it? Sorry? Seven? Yeah. That's yeah, you're right. Okay. Seven goes into all of these. These are, this would be seven times three, this would be seven times four, and this would be seven times one. So we know seven comes out of all of those. So that's going to be our factor. We're going to take the number seven now. Next, we're going to look at our variable C. We have three of them. Remember the, the lowest one. Yeah. The lowest, uh, so which one would I use? Just C. Just C. So we have 7C, 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 and finally, my Ds. Uh, D3. Very good. So we did D to the power of 3. We're not finished yet. Okay. Next, what I have to do is I take my 7C, D to the power of 3, and now I've got to divide all of the terms. So what would 21 divided by 7 be? 3. Yep. Then the next part, what is C4 divided by just C? Uh, C3. Yep, C to the power of 3. And what about and D3 divided by D3? Uh, just D. Is it just D? Or D1. Yeah, it's just D. If I do this, okay, that means I go D3 three. minus 3, that would be D0. What is D0 equal? Uh, nothing. Do you know what any number to the exponent 0 is? So then with our next number, we have negative 28 divided by 7. Do you, do you know what that will give us? Five. Four. Yep, negative 4. Then we have c squared divided by c. So, so it's just c, just c? Just c, yeah. Or, or c1, whatever you want to write, whichever you're more comfortable with. They're both right. And then d5 divided by d3. D2. Yep. And then our last one, 7 by 7, or 7 divided by 7. Wouldn't that be, like, nothing because they all came? So with our last one, technically 7 divided by 7 is 1, okay? And we know that C divided by C cancels out. D3 divided by D3 cancels out. So I'm actually left with the number 1 in those brackets, okay? The idea is just like if we did 2 divided by 2, if you put it in a calculator, it's still 1. If I did yeah. 2D divided by 2D, it's still one.
Or if I did 7CD3 divided by 7CD3, it's still 1. Okay? So our final answer, I'm just going to rewrite what we had below. 7C d to the power of 3 times 3C to the power of 3 minus 4CD squared plus 1. Back with me. So I'll record it for you. So we know that there's no greatest common factor between 5 and 7. And we look at x. There's only an x in the first term. There's no x in the second one. How about a y? Is there a y in the second one? No. No? Is there a w in the first term? No. And is there a z in that term? No. So do they have anything in common at all? No. No. So this is not factorable. That's not factorable. There is no common factor in any of the terms in there. So that's essentially finished. That's as simple as that question could get. So again here, we're still looking for a greatest common factor. Okay. And when I look at this, I want you to think of this is 3x times this number, 7z times this, this number. So essentially, this is going to become one term. So really, it looks like we only have two terms in here. I want you to try to think of that as an idea. Um, in both of the terms, the common factor is y plus 1. y plus 1 exists in both of those. So in fact, what I can do is I can divide both of these as a common factor by y plus 1, just like we were doing before. The y plus 1 comes to the outside. And inside the brackets, we figure out what we're left with. Well, because this is y plus 1 divided by y plus 1, we already know that rule that that's going to cancel out. So we're going to be left with 3x. That's one of the terms. And same idea with the second term. We have y plus 1 divided by y plus 1. They'll cancel out. So we're left with the other term, which is positive 7z. So the answer to this, when it's factored, is y plus 1 times 3x plus 7z. Okay, another way of thinking of this, again, we have the same thing. We have two terms, and the common thing is technically these brackets, but these brackets are hard for me to look at. So in math, sometimes what I can do is I can say let, and I'm going to just put a variable. I'm going to say let y equal x minus 3. So in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace x minus 3 and x minus 3 with the letter y. Okay? So if you look, we're going to have 2x y. As I replace this with y, just like in our substitution, minus 5 times y. So I replace those two brackets with the letter y. So now what I'm doing is I'm looking for the greatest common factor between just these two terms. Now this is a little easier to look at. This is what we're used to seeing. If you look at it, I know that I can take the common factor. There is no coefficient, 2 and 5. There's no number I can take out. x is only in the first term. So what's the only thing I can take out of both of these? Y. Y. So I'm going to take y out of both of them, OK? So in other words, just like factoring, the y goes to the outside, and in the brackets, what are we left with? 2x. Uh, yeah. Uh, subtract 5. Yeah, perfect. The only thing is we're not done, because we technically cheated a little. We replaced the brackets, remember, with the letter y. So i got to put those brackets back in. So now I'm going to place the letter y with those brackets again. Those brackets were x minus 3, and I'm going to leave the other brackets there, 2x minus 5. So this is our answer. I'm just going to rewrite it in black. It's x minus 3 times 2x minus 5. So it's the same idea. I just made the brackets a little easier to look at. Okay, first off, we're looking for common factors, or our greatest common factor in all of them. So when I quickly look through this, first of all, it's in order. We have our x squared, then our 2x's, and our 5. Um, 
but I need a common factor here. So I'm looking through this. There's actually not a common factor for every term. I can't divide everything by something. But if I use the idea of splitting this, okay, I'm just going to make these are imaginary brackets. Okay, and what's important is when I put the imaginary brackets, make sure we still have an operation between them. So we have a plus sign or a minus sign. Make sure that's there. Otherwise, we're going to make it a multiplication question, and that's completely different. So we still have that operation between, and I put two imaginary brackets. Now what I'm doing is I'm making this two types of common factor. First, I'm looking for the common factor between these two. And then once I've done that, I'm going to look for a common factor between these two. So to start off, is there a common factor between the first two terms? Uh, three. Just three? Anything else that can come out? X. Yes, good. So 3x. So when we go down to our next one, we have 3x on the outside. And then when we divide it, we're left with 3x plus 5. Okay? Now in our second bracket, I'm going to take a look. I have 3x and 5. Is there a common factor or anything I can take out of that? Uh, no. No. Um, technically, I could take the number 1 out. Okay, but it's really not going to change anything. But in terms of what we have to do, okay, so technically I could factor out a 1, but we know it's not going to make any difference. So right now what I'm stuck with is plus 3x plus 5, okay? And we technically there's an imaginary 1 here. We could say it's kind of been factored out, okay? Now with what we were doing before, Remember our brackets right now, 3x plus 5 and 3x plus 5. They're the exact same. So I'm going to factor that bracket out. Um, if you want to replace it with y or b or c, you can always do that. But I'm taking those brackets out and I'm making them 1. Okay, That's essentially the end result. Factor it out and make it 1. And in our second bracket, we put whatever's left over. And if you look, we have 3x plus 1 left over. So I put in 3x plus 1. So our final answer is 3x plus 5 times 3x plus 1. Okay, this is the same question. But I've decided when I look at these, I know that 9x and 3x still have something in common. And 15x and 5, they'll have something in common. So I'm going to switch the places of 15x and 3x, okay? So now my question reads 9x squared plus 3x plus 15x plus 5, okay? Same idea as before. I'm going to find a common factor between the first two and a common factor in the second two. So a common factor for the first two is what? 3, anything else? Uh, 3x. Yeah, good. We know that when we go to the next line, oops, I meant that to be there. When we go to the next line, our 3x comes outside, and what's left inside those brackets? Uh, 3x1, or just 3x? 3x, plus three. yeah. Plus, sorry, 3? Yeah. What does this equate oh, to? No. Yeah, uh, so 1? One? Yeah, 1. Okay. Now in our second bracket, 15x and 5, is there a common number that comes out? 5. 5, yeah. So that means our 5, again, comes to the outside. And what's left inside the brackets? We have... So now if you noticed, these two brackets are the exact same. So same idea, I would take them out. I take 3x plus 1 out of both of the terms, and whatever is left over, which is 3x plus 5, that gets put into our other bracket. So we get 3x plus 5 in our other bracket. So this bracket that dealt with those two ones I'd underlined that was the common factor and the numbers yeah. inside this bracket were what was left over and if you look let's see if we can get both in yep 
our answer right now. Oh, it's lagging a little, sorry. Is the exact same as if we go up here. Now, if we want to check our very first answer, we had three, we factored the number three out, we had two x plus one. We need to get back to the original answer. In the original question, we were factoring the question 6x plus 3. So I have to check. So what's happening is this 3 on the outside is technically multiplied by both of the numbers inside the brackets. Okay. So when I multiply 3 times 2x, in other words, it's going to look like this. Yeah, you got 6x. And 3 times 1? 3. And if you notice, that's the exact same as our original answer. So I know I factored it right. All right, so we need to check this answer. So in other words, I have to distribute the x by both of the terms inside the bracket again. So what would x times 8x be? 8x uh, to the power 2. Yep. And what about x times negative 7? 7x. Negative or positive? Negative. Good. And if you notice, we got the exact same answer we did before. So that was our checking. We distributed our common factor back inside to check. And because we have the same equation that we started with, we know we've done the right thing.